Sometimes a life's journey can be determined by birth or at birth. For example, whether one is born male or female can often define the possibilities in some countries and families. But then there's always that one individual who defies the rules, ignores the social norms and stereotypes, and takes an individual, courageous, and sometimes dangerous path to freedom. Please welcome one such individual, Shemaine Attar. Arun, <clears throat> full of boys, a girl child, hardly nine or 10 years old, is sitting in center, surrounded by books. She is the only girl among boys and is barely missing her female cousins who are inside of home, instead of at school, because they are not allowed to get education alongside boys. There is no girls' school in her village. She is born in a conservative Baloch tribe where women and girls are only matter of honor. She is elder in her family. When she was to be born, her parents wanted a baby boy, but their bad luck, a baby girl arrived. It was customary in her village, in her tribe, to keep girls inside of homes. But her uncle, a university graduate, he wanted to give her an opportunity to see the world, be part of the society. Luckily, she had a name that could be used as a male, as a female. So he saw a chance to change her course of life. He decided to raise her like a male. So three months old, she went from a baby girl to a baby boy. She is given get up of boys. She is allowed to go outside of home to get education in a boys' school. She is free. She is confident. She begins to notice small injustices faced by women and girls in her village. When newspaper arrives to her home, she watches it pass from elder male to younger, youngest male. And when women got hold of the paper, it is already old news. In this way, she completed her eighth grade year. Now fear starts to come in. This will be end of her education. Because high school is five kilometers away. So boys are free. They have a bicycles. But she knows her father will not allow her to travel by her own, even she were posing like a boy. I can't let you to do that. I don't have a time to walk you there and back. Sorry, it is impossible. She gets very upset. But a miracle happened. A distance relative offered to teach her ninth and eighth curriculum during summer holidays. So this way, she completed her matriculation. Her mind is still free. The girl whom I am talking about you is me, Shamim, who is talking before you now. For For, for centuries, people have been fighting for their identity. People have been privileged. People have been loved because of their identity, their nationality, their ethnicity. People have been hated 
people had been discriminated. Again, because of their identity, their race, their religion, their gender. Identity determines your position in a society wherever you live. If you ask me, I say I hate the question of this identity because millions of the girls in this world are being denied their basic rights because of being a female. I would may face same if I hadn't been raised like a boy. I am determined to study, to learn, be free. After my schooling, even enrolling in college was not easy for me. I went on three days hunger strike. <laughs> what, what is when I got permission and I completed my college? After two years, when time comes to me to go to university, my father turned his attention to my younger brothers. They need to go to school, secure jobs, support the family. As a woman, my place was at home. But I don't give up. I sign up for a two years program to become a lady health visitor. Then I heard about Thardip. <laughs> then I heard about Thardip Rural Development Program, a non-profit organization working to empower rural communities in rural sin. I sneak away. I travel five hours to give an interview for a position. I was I have been farthest from my home I have ever been. I am closest to freedom I have ever been. <laughs> luckily, luckily, I got the position. But hardest part was to face my father. Relatives are already teasing him about her daughter fendering off. They are scaring him with talk of her crossing the border. So when I arrive home, I want nothing but to accept the position at TRDP. It would mean I can start using what I have learned. So that night, I pack my all things in a little bag and I walk into my father's room and said to him, tomorrow morning bus is going to be come. If you believe in me, if you believe in me, you wake me off, you drop me off to the bus station. If you don't, I'll understand. I go to sleep. Next morning, my father was standing beside me to drop me to bus. <laughs> that day, I realized the importance of words. I learned how words affect on our heart. I learned negotiation is helpful than fighting. <laughs> At TRDP, I see a Pakistan which I didn't know. I, a country much more complex than I had realized. I thought I had a difficult life, but there I see what women in other rural areas were experiencing. That really opens my eyes. My eyes. Some of women had 11 children, but nothing to feed them. For getting water, they would walk three hours to well on daily basis, well saw seven, six kilometers away. There are no schools. 
nearest hospital is 32 kilometers away. If a woman is in labor, she has to travel by camel to get hospital. Distance is so huge, so great, she may die on her way. So it became not a job for me now. It became my passion. Now, as I was getting salary, so I was sending money to my home. Relatives and neighbors were noticing this. They understand the importance of education. Over time, some of them start sending their daughters to school. Over time, it became easier and acceptable for young women to attend college. Today, not a single girl out of school in my village. <laughs> Girls are doing jobs in the health sector. Recently, one of my female cousin has joined Sin Police. My father's friends call on me to support their sons to find jobs in nonprofit. <laughs> Life is good, and I have been offered a government job as a teacher, but I am not in mood to attend or to accept that job because I am happy at TRDP. But somewhere in my heart, I know. My village needs further changings. So it was same time I start Acumen Fellowship. Here I meet many of fellows. They had taken risks. So I start thinking what leadership really means. I ask myself, should I take risk? I read Bill Sweeter. I learned how much Jacqueline has faced for those who were living so away. She, but she had a pen for them, so she went there, she supported them. So I decided to take risk, but on trial basis. <laughs> I walk into classroom, and I see all of these little shamims staring back at me, with full of dreams in their eyes. Same dreams which I had, same dreams of freedom which I had in my childhood. <laughs> Girls are eager to learn, but school is understaffed. Children sit hopeful, learn nothing, and then leave. I can't see this happening. There is no turning point. I have found my purpose. So I accept the teacher job. I enlisted some of my old friends to ask them to support me to teach. I am introducing my children with out of the world through extra curriculum activities and books. I share them profiles of world's best leaders. I share them the letter of King Martin Luther's, which we have read during fellowship seminar. Last year, few of my girls went at college. Two of them belonged from lower caste communities before this, they never been allowed to attend college. I didn't give up my study. Today, I am completing my PhD. <laughs> my research is the issues of seasonal migration in Thar Parker and its negative effects on children's education. If all goes well, at the end of this year, 
I would have completed my PhD, and that will, will allow me to gain a managerial position in government school system. After this, I may make more decisions. I may play a critical role. I know the way is not easy. Destination is not close. But I have a dreams in my eyes, and I am not going to be big. Thank you. What an inspiring life's journey, so full of risk and transforming the lives of so many others. And speaking of risk, I can't imagine doing a talk anywhere in the language that I don't speak every day. Shameen memorized this talk in English uh, and delivered it flawlessly because it's from her heart.